Lesson 13.1c, Comparing Theoretical and Experimental Probability. We have learned how to calculate theoretical and experimental probability. Now let's compare them. For theoretical probability, the probability of an event is the ratio of the number of ways the event can occur to the total number of equally likely outcomes. For experimental probability, the probability of an event is equal to the ratio, the number of times the event occurs, to the total number of trials performed. So here we have theoretical versus experimental. For theoretical, we write a ratio of the number of ways the event can occur to the total number of ways in the sample space as equally likely outcomes. We're finding the probability mentally. For experimental, we write a ratio of the actual number of times the event occurred during trials to the total number of trials we performed. We're finding the probability physically. So here again we have our suit of diamonds. There's 13 cards going from ace to king. For the theoretical probability of picking an ace, we have probability, ace, that's our event. It would be the number of aces that are here, there's only one, to the number of cards. And there are 13 cards, we have one thirteenth. I didn't actually try to pick a card, but there's one ace out of 13 cards, so theoretically, the probability would be one thirteenth. For experimental probability of picking an ace, it's the ratio of the number of times I picked an ace to the total number of trials I did. So let's say I tried it 50 times and I picked an ace two times. That would be 2 fiftieths, which can be simplified to 1 25th. Now, this ratio may change if I do more trials. It may be different if I do 100 trials or 1,000 trials. Each time I picked a card, I need to return it to the pile of cards and mix the pile, shuffle it again, so I have a chance of picking the ace again. I can't pick the ace and leave it out because now there's only 12 cards and there's no ace there. So every time I pick a card, I've got to put the card back, shuffle it up, and then try picking again. Now here we have a number cube. What is the probability of rolling each number on a standard number cube? Well, theoretically, we have the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6, and there's only one 1, there's only 1, 2, 1, 3, 1, 4, 1, 5, there's one of each number, so the theoretical probability is 1 6 for each one. It's equal to how many of that number is on the cube, there's only one 1, there's only one 2, there's only one 3, 2 how many numbers are on the cube in all? There are six numbers on the cube, so rolling a one would be one six, rolling a two would be one six, and so on. For experimental probability, we have the six numbers on the cube, and I actually did this. I took a number cube, and I rolled it 20 times. I rolled this number cube 20 times, and what I did was, I got scratch paper to make a tally mark for each time I rolled a certain number. And then I totaled the tally marks, which became my numerator. So out of the 20 times, I rolled a 1 three times, I rolled a 2 two times, I rolled a 3 three times, a 4 four times, I rolled a 5 seven times, and a 6 one time. If I added all of these numerators, it will equal 20 for the 20 rolls that I made. For the 2 twentieths, it can be simplified to 1 tenth, and the 4 twentieths can be simplified to 1 fifth. It was how many times I rolled that number for the numerator to how many times I rolled in all, which was 20 rolls, 20 times. The ratios for the experimental results are different from the ratios for the theoretical probability. By performing more trials, maybe 100, 500, 1,000, we will tend to get experimental results that are closer to 
the theoretical probabilities. So you can try this experimental probability yourself if you have a number cube. Just use scratch paper to make tally marks for each roll result, then total the tally marks as the numerator, and your denominator is going to be how many times you rolled in all. The more trials we perform, the more likely the experimental results will match the theoretical probability, though very unlikely it is possible for the results to match. There's a slight chance that may happen, so it would be around here. It would be just, it's not impossible, but there's a very slight chance, so it would be over here on the number line. It would be close to 0%. So theoretical probability is based on the structure of an experiment, where experimental probability is based on the results of the experiment. So remember, for a theoretical probability, the total number of equally likely outcomes, that's the denominator of the ratio, is the same as the sample space. For the probability of rolling a 4 on a number cube, it's how many fours are on the cube? Well, there's only one. And how many numbers are on the cube? There's six. The sample space consists of six numbers, one, two, three, four, five, six. So that is our denominator. That's the total number of equally likely outcomes. So the probability, the theoretical probability, of rolling a four with a number cube is equal to the ratio one, six, if the total number of equally likely outcomes is 6, we can find the probability of a simple event by dividing the number of ways the event can occur by 6. If it were 10, we would divide it by 10. If it were 20, we would divide it by 20. If it were 100, we would divide it by 100, and so on. Just keep in mind that this means 1 divided by 6, or 1 to 6. We're finished with Lesson 13.1. We're going to be moving on to 13.2. We're going to start talking about finding probability using a table. I hope you now understand the difference between theoretical and experimental probability. And if I was able to help you, hit that like button for me. And join me for the next lesson. Bye.